Hello and welcome to Fintech Focus TV. My name's Ian Bailey and we're today at the A360 event at the Excel in East London. And I'm delighted to be joined by the team from Acquired.com. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Good afternoon. thanks for having us. Uh, can you just take a moment just to introduce yourselves? Sure. Justin Hanna, uh, Head of Direct Sales here at Acquired.com. Been here for three years now. I believe was from Well Bay and Barnicard. Yeah, Grant Evans, Head of Partnerships. Also been here three years. Previously, Global Payments, Cash Flows. Okay, yep. I'm the, I'm the newest to the panel. Um, I'm, I'm George Boot, I'm the Demand Generation Manager. Uh, so I joined last, last January. Very good, thank you very much. And tell us about Acquired.com, who are you? Yeah, I'll take the lead. Um, so Acquired.com, we're a proprietary payment gateway and payment initiation service provider, mainly UK focused. So it's our own technology stack. Uh, lots of different acquire integrations into our platform servicing online payments, digital wallets, direct debit, obviously open banking as a PISP in the market, and more latterly point of sale both for card and excitingly open banking as well. Very good, yeah, okay. And I'm interested to, to hear a little bit about how things work behind the scenes, I guess. So like just in your direct sales and um, grant your partnerships, like how do you guys interact? How do you guys work together? Yeah, it's a good question. I think if you speak to most businesses, partnerships and direct, probably don't have too much of a good relationship. I think here at Acquire.com, where we've tried to work closer with each other is, from a partnership's perspective, is work with ISVs and platforms to have to monetize payments, um, which probably hasn't been done enough in the past from a partnership perspective. And from a direct perspective, it's speaking to every customer day in, day out to understand the challenges they're having when it comes to payments, and then looking for the solution after that. Um, I think as consultative sellers, we want to ensure that the solutions that we have don't just help the customer today, but also help the customer tomorrow as we move into this reoccurring, reoccurring commerce space. Yeah, yeah, very good. And Grant? Yeah, I think like Justin said, we, we've kind of made the model work quite well. We've got reseller partners that do the wholesale cycle and utilize our tech stack and our integrations to monetize payments. But then we've also got lighter touch referral partners. And I think the way we've channeled that is that the referral partners are looked after by our partner management team, but the end customer that they introduce is handled by our direct team. So yeah. we're kind of working in, in unison to okay. service the partner as best we can, but giving them access to a greater sales team with feet on the ground, different people throughout the country, and Justin's team that can actually have and build that relationship with yeah. the end customer, which is we're really well for us in the market. Yeah, perfect. So it's, it's, a, it's a double pronged attack, right? Yeah. Bring them in, make them feel good. Yeah, absolutely. Not just a them approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah quite. And, and George, the new kid on the block? How does, uh, how does the demand generation side of things work, the modern sales team? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that I worked out along kind of the journey that, we, that we've taken is that, you know, marketing is often seen as a kind of a support function for these, for, these two, for, for these two elements, right? And, you know, it's often the sales decks, it's the content, it's the element of that which supports these uh, functions in what they do. But demand generation was very much approach in which that how do we actually take marketing and bring them on the same level as sales and partnerships and how do we connect them using content and using different types of thought leadership strategies and and taking you know the messages that our customers are saying and ways in which the customers go to markets today for a payment solution how do we act differently and equally be a part of their research that they're doing yeah. um in response to that demand yeah i understand yeah, very good I'm a subject that we've heard spoken about a lot here today is around that, you know, the adoption of open banking, specifically around point of sale. Like, what are you guys saying about that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it ties in quite nicely with our recent announcements. So we, we've got a strategic relationship with MultiPay. Okay. Uh, they provide our hardware. We've done a you know, high-level integration with those guys so that we can offer our proprietary open banking solution of pay by bank. I think we have conversations, should we call it pay by bank, open banking, pay by bank for me on the high street right. makes more yeah. sense as the, you know, the payment method. 
and I think you know we, we get attacked quite quickly although we're a card and an open banking provider you know yeah. you know consumer protection on cards it's not as quick as Apple Pay or Google Pay I mean you take a step back from that we say we're not selling into bars restaurants yeah. you know, that hospitality you know quick churns sector you know we're, we're doing a lot of, within cash and carry furniture high-end retail you know your Michelin star restaurants when ultimately the, the cost of sale for a card payment is, is very very high for those merchants automotive car sales so taking a look at specific sector verticals and, and also in get ready cards you're saying run it alongside card payments see what the adoption looks like building loyalty programs around you know encouraging people where they maybe have avios points on an amex yeah, what's okay. the equivalent if they're going pay by bank you know from the customer point of view it's not just about the merchant you get instant refunding so you're out shopping buying some clothes yeah. take some clothing back in on a saturday you get that money immediately back in your bank account, whereas yeah. on a card payment, you might be waiting for the following week. You've got a cost of living yeah. crisis. The sooner you can get money back in your account, right, the, the better for everyone. So oh. there's a lot of benefits. Everyone, everyone goes, you know, merchant, I get it, merchant, I get it. But actually, yeah. there's a huge amount of consumer benefits that sit behind pay by bank as a payment method as well. We don't talk about it enough. I think, I think actually you're the first people we've heard talk about the actual, the, the client side, you know, the user side of that as well. That's, um, that's really good to know. And what does the future look like? What's next for Acquired.com? Yeah, it's a good question. I think when we compare ourselves to maybe some of the larger businesses out there, we are quite unconventional in our approach to new business. Okay. Um, what we try to do is educate businesses before we try to sell to them. We try and create demand with, with George and the marketing team is to tell people what we do. Um, building in public. Um, is a phrase we like to use. We tell people what we're doing. We tell people what we're doing with our customers, the challenges they are having, and what we think are acquired. We're not saying we know everything. We're saying we know the challenges because we speak to customers every single day. It's then on us as a business to take that internally and see what challenges do we think business is going to have in 12 months' time, in two years' time, and then start to build from that. I think one of the biggest things that we've noticed as well is that 80% of you know, B2B buyer journeys today start with a referral of some form. Yeah. So taking that, whether that might be inbound, it's dark social, it's people having conversations in the background of things that we can't ever really justify. Um, so what we've done is essentially we've taken a real education focus to go to market, which is building evangelism within the business. So how do we leverage thought leaders on LinkedIn? How do we take their thoughts and their knowledge and everything they're talking to customers about on a daily, daily basis? and putting that into a platform, which I often think is just another digital conference. It's an element of, you know, we're all on LinkedIn every single day, the same way that we're all here trying to learn things. We all go to LinkedIn to learn things. And that's the same way that we've taken our go-to-market approach, which is let's take all of the interesting things that our customers are saying, put them into a narrative that's able to understand, and let's put it out there at scale to make sure that people are educated and they know exactly who acquired are, what challenges we solve before they actually contact our sales team. Fascinating, yeah, I, I love it. And I think, you know, again, probably just to, to finish this off, like how do people go about finding you? Like what's, what's the best way to... Uh, a great, great kind of segue, but yeah, yeah. LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yeah. LinkedIn's yeah. a great place. Uh, you know, Justin Aguan are very vocal on the platform, likewise for myself. Um, but uh, the whole organization's open. Where yeah. Anybody will take a message from anyone. Great. It's fantastic stuff, guys. Thank you ever so much for your time. Have a great show. Thank you very much Thank for you. watching. Cheers. Thanks.